Uh, soft power is a key issue here uh, for the cultural uh, diplomacy movement. How do you understand this term uh, and how can it be implemented in international relations? Because first of all soft power is not to use military but other means. Uh, and soft power can also be used by small nations like Norway uh, by different uh, means. We have some advantages that uh, greater and superpowers don't have. Uh, for instance, we have no colonial past, so we come there with no hidden agenda. We have no, normally no economic interest in countries uh, where we are uh, contributing. Uh, we have another important advantage uh, that as we have a network of uh, Norwegian and international uh, NGOs. Uh, and very often when Norway has been involved in peace efforts, it has started with a Norwegian NGO being on ground in this country for many years and got confidence on both sides as in Sudan, North South negotiations, as in Guatemala. Two uh, successes where Norway uh, has contributed to peace uh, agreements. Uh, talking about the European crisis at the moment, do you think that the use of soft power is threatened by the ongoing economic crisis? Yes, of course, we are in a difficult economic situation and that makes it even more important to solve conflicts uh, peacefully. Uh, regarding the economic crisis in Greece and other southern European countries, uh, we see the importance of the European Union now, that they uh, stand in solidarity with these uh, countries in, in crisis. Uh, regarding conflicts around the world, uh, fortunately there are less conflicts today than 25 years ago. It's more democracy, it's more respect for human rights. So it has moved in the right direction and very often it has been done by soft power where small nations could play a role, uh, building up confidence between the parties, not using military means but using uh, dialogue, leading up to negotiations and a long-term commitment which is very important. You shall not leave a country when you have facilitated a peace agreement, you shall stand there and helping the peace agreements to be uh, implemented also by um, uh, development uh, cooperation. Uh, talking about Norway, Norway is a very peaceful country and a peace-loving country. What can the world learn from Norway's way of life? Well, we, maybe we are not more peace-loving than others, but uh, we have... Uh, and if you go long back in history, Norwegian Vikings were not so peaceful, <laughs> but they changed. Uh, from banditry to uh, trade and after that we have had uh, a history of uh, peace efforts. Well, I, I think that what, uh, what uh, maybe some can learn is that to contribute to a peace agreement is not coming to a country, call the parties to the table, facilitate an agreement and leave again. That will never work. It's a question of long-term commitment to be present there over a long time, often by NGOs, building up confidence between the parties. You have to be invited by all parties concerned in the conflict to play a role. And if you are invited, you must uh, have the necessary competence and knowledge about the situation in the conflict. And then you can play a facilitating role, uh, not impose a solution on the parties, but encourage the parties to find their own solution. And so to stand there after a peace agreement. These are some of the experiences we have learned and which we of course share with others. Uh, please tell us shortly about your current activities. I heard you are traveling a lot at the moment. Yeah, after I stepped down as Prime Minister of Norway, uh, serving almost seven years in 2005, I um, founded the Oslo Center for Peace and Human Rights, where I'm now the president. And we are involved in different uh, important programs. We are working on interreligious uh, dialogue projects. We are working on a uh, human rights project in countries like uh, Burma, North Korea and Eritrea. And we are working on what we call democracy, power sharing and coalition building. Sharing uh, my experiences from running coalition governments in Norway in other countries where they have now uh, coalitions, but where they are fragile and rather um, weak uh, democracies and where the alternative sometimes can be a violent conflict. So this brings me around the, the world, <laughs> uh, especially to the Horn of Africa, uh, to some Asian countries, 
And we are also working in partnership with other uh, international organizations like the UN Alliance of Civilizations, which have their annual conference in Rio de Janeiro, where I'm on the way now to have two speeches. And we are working with National Democratic Institute on our coalition building projects and with other partners. Thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Good luck.